Hello everyone, I just want to put out a disclaimer before we start the podcast episode. At around 24 minutes, the audio will get really noisy, so when that does happen, please just try to lower down the volume as much as you possibly can until it gets bearable for your ears. I was trying to edit it after recording, but it didn't go the way as I wanted it to, so I'm I'm sorry for the inconvenience, and thank you for your patience, and I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, what's up? It's Rija. Welcome to our third episode on Mustang Studios. Yeah, and um, who do we have here today? I already introduced myself, so. Hi, I'm Bicha, the video editor. I'm Freya, the secretary. I'm Bavika, the treasurer. I'm Sarah, the vice president. I'm Padma, your public relations officer, or the public relations officer, not yours. That's kind of weird. Um, anyways. <clears throat> All right, so t- today we're going to be talking about childhood experiences, whatever. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm Harshita, and I just recently joined. Hey. Lambs to the slaughter. Harshita our newest is, sacrifice. is our member in the podcast. She's she's super cool, super awesome. Yeah. Can everyone yeah. give like a round of applause for Harshita? Yeah, Harshita. She's helping us right now with the video, with recording, the with filming the video. The camera yeah. Um, anyways. Yes. Today's topic, childhood. Everyone has very interesting childhoods, dare I say. I've heard lots of conversations. So I'd like to start off by saying we all have something in common. We're all Indian. So what would you guys think well, of this b- brown? Brown is the right <laughs> word. <laughs> We're all South Asian. Yeah. You are Pakistani, right? Yes, I am Pakistani. And you are Bangladeshi. Bangladeshi. We all have one thing in common. We have we all grew up with the brown. A South Asian parenting, I think. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very true. Um, I was like starting from with me, I was born in Pakistan. I was born in Pakistan, raised in America. So, so I don't really remember much of my Pakistani childhood because um, I came to America when I was two years old. So, yeah. Same exact case with me. I came here at the age of one. Wow, okay. yeah. Bro, not even a year, not even a memory. You were one year old. What, what did you truly expect to remember as a one year old? Okay, this is the thing that I never understood. Like, when you're one, you have, like, your first birthday is always, you know, a really grand celebration. Like, oh, you're finally one year old. So they, everybody in your family calls over everyone else in their family, who then calls everybody else in their family. So it's like the entire extended family tree combined with the roots and the branches just come over to your party. And they're like, oh, my God, your child, she's going to remember me in the future. So fast forward 14 years, some random auntie uncle walks up to me. He's like, Hey, do you remember me? I was there when you were one year old and I helped change your diapers when your parents were young. And I'm yeah. like, and then back you're up, like... just back up a second. You came when I was one, one year old. How do you really expect a one year old kid to remember who you are? <laughs> I'm one. I'm not going to remember who you are. And they, okay, the weirdest stories. They're like, oh, I helped your parents change their diapers. You were so cute as a kid. What happened to you? What happened to me? It's called puberty. <laughs> Yeah, they they weren't even in a significant part of your life. Anymore. No, they were there for literally one party, and that was just about it, as far as I remember as a okay. one-year-old. I want to add on to, like, Padma's story with one of my stories. The only, like, few memories of what I could truly remember as, like, being, like, a small kid at, like, two years old in India is my mom telling me that I have gotten out of an apartment complex by myself into the street at the age of two. So it all started, like, my mom had to, like, go out and get stuff, so I was left in the care of my dad and my uncle. Oh, fun. Fun. <laughs> the favorite combo. The favorite uncle. Dunk- so my uncle was, like, probably taking a nap. My dad was probably busy, and the door was open. Because, you know, in India, apartment complex, it's, like, the front door, and then you go go down the stairs. So my two-year-old self was just, like, I don't, two-year-olds can, like, walk decently. I just went, like, out the door down the stairs and like out of the gate 
and my mom told me like she was like scared like going outside yeah very much visibly so she found me next to like a pani puri guy this is gonna be a common occurrence to your viewers please, please i don't know if it's like a pani puri guy or like some sort of vendor who just recognized me and then just like left me there and just waited for my mom to find out but you're about to get kidnapped. He was a fam. I think he was like some sort of like my family friend, or he knew my mom or grandma. Okay, as two le- a two year old, you at least have the ability to walk. You're not like one legged ducks, at least, you know. In my defense, I some of the details are janky, but what a majority told you is true. So if my mom finds this in her podcast, I'm sorry if I didn't get some of the details Sandy. right. <laughs> Say hi to my mom, everybody. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's the thing about Indian. That's, that's the thing about not just Indian, brown families in general. Everybody's a family member. Your cousin from five states across. Your your dad's uncle's brother's best friend. True story. Your mom's brother's wife's brother-in-law. They're all family, dude. That's I think that's a wonderful thing, but also kind of weird at the same time. Because some random uncle can just rock to your rock up to your house and be like, "I know your dad, so we're related." And I'm like, "Where though? How exactly do you know each other?" It's like every single because t- my dad is incredibly sociable. He loves to go out and talk to people, which has also really helped him, you know, gain a lot of connections. So in the temple, we do lots of religious activities. That I did a lot of religious activities growing up. So. I was always accustomed to temple environment, always meeting the religious leaders and like the priests or whatever. My dad was an avid volunteer, so he would always go up and talk to the priests, the people who work there. So every pretty much everybody he talks to at this point is basically like family. This dude has, I don't even know the blood relation at this point. I'm pretty sure we have some distant blood relation because of Indian family trees, which I will get into later. Or brown family trees, should I say? <laughs> no, how true it is for you too. Well, pretty much everybody. I mean, literally anybody is like family. They could be your long lost brother and sister, for all we know. Yeah, and speaking of brothers and sisters, does anybody want to talk about like their sibling experiences when they were younger? Because when I was five years old, it was like the best moment of my life when my sister was born. Oh, I that's so cute. It was like the first time I was able to experience being an elder sister. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, in in our culture, older siblings there's like honorifics. Mm-hmm. So my sister called me Apu, oh, and so and Ada. Oh, so cute. Like, like a little version. Like, she couldn't pronounce Rija, so she said Ada. Oh, that's so <laughs> and, cute. Um, and then all of a sudden, when she turned seven, she just called me Rija. And, <laughs> and now... <laughs> and but now, then one day. Yeah, one day. Now she's calling me Rija, and to this day, she's still calling me Rija. Yeah. I miss those, yeah. I miss those days. <laughs> I have a younger sister, and she calls me Akka, because that's how you say older sister in Telugu. And I think she's like around 11 or 12 right now, and she still calls me Akka because she doesn't know how to pronounce my actual name. Oh. <laughs> Wait, I was going to say that was cute, and then you told the reason. Yeah. Mine just straight up just called me like Bavaka the entire time. Even my own mom was just like, just say Akka. He says Akka sometimes. Only when you like put a gun to his head. No, <laughs> not Akka. when I put a gun to his head, Padma. He just doesn't say it. That's so sad, dude. You could, okay. I'm under, like, the philosophy, like, if they're younger to you, it's best for them to call you by the honorific. Like, all my younger cousin, brothers, and sister all call me Akka, and I love it. Oh, Wait, how old is your brother, like, from you? Like, he's a package deal. <laughs> so, hot, hot. okay, yeah, fun fact, what, I'm a twin. Was a late shipping fee? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there wasn't the ac- actually a late shipping fee, if you will. Two minutes. A two minutes. A two minute fee. Yeah, fun fact. I'm a twin. Uh, though I not look it. I don't know why that's a, a specific detail I had to bring up. Because growing up, no one believed that we were twins. They were always, everyone in the family, you know, they already knew. So they're like, ah, oh, you're twins. They don't think much of it. But when I go to school, I have to tell people out loud that, like, 
hey, my, my brother is the same age as me. And they're like, what? What? How is that possible? I'm like, we're twins. And it just, their brain suddenly goes into a loading symbol. They're like, trying to process twins. Same gender? No, they're not the same gender. So it had to be like, yeah, we're special. We're fraternal twins. You know, shout out to every fraternal twin out there. If y'all ever had such experiences, let me know. What's it like growing up with a fraternal twin or someone who's the exact same age as you? Honestly, uh, not much. It's like growing up with a brother. It's just a, a, like a normal brother or sister, but they're the same age as you. Honestly, we don't talk much. We're not on bad terms. It's just that, I don't know, we just, I guess, don't really bother each other too much. So they just exist in your house? Pretty much. That's like the relationship I have with my older brother because we- <laughs> <laughs> like I respect him and love him, but like yeah, we're not that close in all reality. Like at the moment, anyway. So. Okay, actually, um, I want to clarify kind of on the the thing I said about uh us being twins. A lot of people, okay, the way that I worded it might have been a bit harsh, but like, uh, a lot of people didn't really believe the fact that I had a twin because of the fact that you know, we're a, a boy and a girl. So usually the a uh, popular misconception is that lots of twins are uh, similar looking. Obviously, it is true. Identical twins exist, but I guess fraternal twins. I mean, nowadays people have like, you know, they just know for a fact that even fraternal twins exist. But even then, like, their kids are like first graders, second graders. I don't think they're gonna really, you know, dwell too much on the concept of oh, they're twins, but they're not of the, you know, they they look very different. So you know. I had this one experience in like seventh grade where this one girl, I was introducing myself to this one girl, we were classmates, so, and you know, just, you know, we're friends and stuff. So I told her like, hey, I have a twin brother. And she's like, I don't believe you. Straight up, she's like, I don't believe you. You're lying to me. I'm like, why would I lie to you? I do have a twin brother. Like there's something so specific to lie about though. It's weirdly specific. Like, why would I want to lie about having a twin? I feel like, Whenever I see twins, I think it's more of more with the identical twins than the fraternal twins, but they seem like super close. Like they're always walking together. They seem like best friends. Oh yeah, because what I always see with twins, there's just a sense of camaraderie where, like, if you don't know anyone in a room, you always just stick together because, like, you know for a fact that you don't know them, they don't know you, so you stick. You just kind of learn to stick together, especially when you know when you were younger. When we always walk into a room full of people that we don't know, or when we're like parties with like the uncles that you know were saw us when we were like two or something, or one years old, and change your diaper or some or some whatever weird story they tell us. Like we don't know anybody here, so we're just gonna do the smartest thing and like stick together. But nowadays it's not really like that. We kind of just kind of go off in our own directions. So, so yeah, in seventh grade, she straight up didn't believe me, and she's like, "I don't believe you." I'm like, what? I, why would I lie about that? So weirdly specific thing to lie about. So at brunch time, I literally had to sit her down at a tree in front of the classroom that we were about to go in for third and fourth. And I had to literally call my brother over and be like, hey, come over here. I want to introduce you to someone. She's like expecting to be like, right. Being like, hey, the, she's, I felt like she was expecting like my brother to rock up being like, family's hey, two years older than her. But nope. Obviously he's like, yeah, we're twins. What about? It? And she's like, jaw drops like that's not what i was expecting at all it's like do you believe me now and she's like yes yes i believe you and i will never question you again about this i'm like thank you i don't know it was a weird experience it was really weird i I don't know but then i also had this one thing in sixth grade where fifth sixth or somewhere in middle school i don't remember i told this one girl that we were twins we were introducing each other also it's like the first trimester of the year because in our middle school in cupertino what they did was they used trimesters i told her uh i entered uh, i told her but like my brother was next to me at the time so i introduced like hey this is my brother she didn't believe me naturally when i told her i was a twin and she thought we were going out yeah fun fact about me i did not realize you had a brother until i actually had to come over to your house yeah, that's also what I was talking about before. Since you guys are fraternal twins, like I don't really see you guys like uh like always together as I see with identical twins. 
that's why people may think that you don't have a, a twin yeah okay. sibling it's one thing to think that it's one thing to think that we're not twins solely because you know we don't uh stick around each other too much that makes sense i i kind of understand that but it's another thing to assume that we're not blood related in the slightest and we're going out it's another thing this girl legit didn't believe me when i told her like this is my brother we were born together i'm not going out with this boy and she's like she didn't believe me and i was like oh my god sweet home <laughs> Oh my god. No. All right. No. All right. No. Hey. Anyways, guys. So I w- I am really sorry. <laughs> Nisha looks traumatized. Alright, so um I don't know. Speaking of middle school, I did watch a lot of like TV shows and I was like into a lot of things too. And this this was also before middle school as well, but I I really liked like watching watching PBS Kids even oh, during middle school yes. and before middle school yes. when I was younger. Yes, <laughs> younger I I watched uh I watched Barney like Barney was the <laughs> the one the one show where my childhood was made you know and I even had childhood like childhood <laughs> dreams and childhood nightmares were made in my childhood. yeah and I. Also, I had like a Barney stuffed animal as well, but then we gave all of our stuffed animals away when I, when I, oh. when I became a high schooler. Oh my god! I, oh my god. I, I was like, I always slept with like Barney the stuffed animal. Like I could not sleep without it. So my core memory of Barney was like listening to all the Kill Barney songs in elementary school. <laughs> you know those songs are just like I hate you, oh you hate god. me. Oh Let's god. team up to kill Barney. Bro, I think that I think the cornerstone of everyone's like every, whoever was born in like early two thousands, like we were. The cornerstone is like having the older cousins show you like what would be tame stuff to us now but when we were kids they showed us stuff like racist mario do y'all remember racist mario no No? they just ruin a lot of things you know these people bro okay oh my god how do i explain this just let's watch it dude you could okay the thing about this video is that it was like made in the early 2000s it wouldn't fly now obviously i think they i think they took out a lot of things that were in the original don't ask me how I know this. It was just burned into my memory, dude. I had older cousins who loved to torture the younger kids. Like, every single time we were in a family gathering, what they do is the parents will, like, the moms will be on their own, you know, the dads will go off and talk about politics or whatever, and then they leave the cousins to us. Uh, and if if you put, you know, a bunch of five-year-olds with, like, you know, middle school and high school students, obviously they're going to get your very funny ideas, you know? I don't know what it is. If you, if you all had older cousins like this, also... Do let us know. Older cousins, I do this all the time to my younger cousins too. They love to torture the kids. And honestly, sometimes when I come out of it, when I like look back on it, I think the dude, it was the time of my life. As a kid, I was scarred watching racist Mario. Okay. <laughs> Mario got ruined for me for like five years, but now I realize that it's hilarious. Yeah, and that reminds me, when I was younger, I I was watching a lot of like Elmo. Elmo videos on my DSi, because <laughs> at, at that time I played a lot with my DSi. That's Another like DSi. childhood memory, Nintendo. Nintendo. Oh, yeah, oh one. my god! Yeah. Oh my yeah. god! And then like those those videos kind of ruined my my perception <laughs> of Elmo. <laughs> so see so. that's the thing. Like every if you're if you some if you were someone who on the early two thousands internet or videos made in the early 2000s internet you're just gonna find stuff like this you know what else was in the early 2000s and actually speaking of which the iphones came out in 2007 like the first iphone oh came yeah came out in 2007 like before remember our oh parents had flip phones oh they did yeah, yeah. They did. can oh. you believe it and, and it Bro, doesn't i feel seem... old <laughs> what is this yeah and it doesn't seem that long ago 2007 kids these days will not know the pain kids these days will literally not know the pain of having to like hog the the tussle of wanting to play angry birds on a touchpad have y'all have ever had a touchpad 
You know what that is, right? I had an iPod. <laughs> <laughs> like the really bulky ones, right? The really like silver bath. Like, like the first generation iPods. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of like the iPods, like you were really bougie for that one because I remember back then it was like really exclusive to have an ipod yeah and remember the song dynamite oh my most single oh, ladies actually, by no, beyonce dynamite. Dynamite it was the it was the shoddy humility that's that's replay not dynamite <laughs> oh replay it's it's replay replay had the in the lyrics it talked about an ipod my ipod is stuck on replay, replay. <laughs> mine was just single ladies by beyonce I think I never had an iPod because to us, iPod was like, you're fancy. You have the money. You're rich. And my parents were like, we're not getting you iPods. You're 10 year olds. What are you going to do with it? Just if you want some games, just play on our phones. So that's exactly what we did. All the time, we would clamor for our mom's phone just to play Candy Crush. My grandma's tablet, even like my other extended family, they all have, you know, all the grandmas in our family, they all had tablets with Candy Crush on it. So every single time we went to their houses in India, they're like, can I have your tablet, please? I'm like, yeah, sure. Because who, who's going to say no to a seven-year-old wanting to play Candy Crush? They just, they just gave it to us, dude. Anyways. I'm scared. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, there's just, like, people outside just walking by. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, this kind of done me off. <laughs> just <laughs> just in front of the window. Just signal to them. Just be like, yeah, what's up? Yeah, I think I would try to one of them. Yeah. I what is it? Like, I did this to one dude. He's like, yeah. Nice. Anyways, uh, what was I, I saying? All right, all right, let's do it. So, so, yeah, every every grandma in my family, they always had Candy Crush, which was fun because Candy Crush is like one of those games, it is like peak childhood games. Y'all played Subway Surfers. Subway Surfers, Some Temple people Run. Still play that. Oh yes, yeah, as they play. should, as they it should. Die. These, never... these are like the types these are just some examples of things from your childhood that don't die even mm. to this day immortal they're always gonna live on i think i never actually played any pc games growing up i never played the likes of um zelda or like runescape you know the old games okay does this website ring a bell for anyone girls go games yeah i, I never played on it yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, what do i say about <laughs> Just tell us your experiences, bro. What did you do? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't remember. Oh, all right. Just, also, how do you... Did you like it? It was fun. Yes. How do you feel? See, it was fun. It's like it was asking, fun. Like, this is like a mom asking a kid about her day. How was your day? It's like, how was your day, Shreya? <laughs> it feels like we're holding her hostage. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Okay, if I'm going to explain it. It's just basically the girliest like website on earth in like the early 2000s and 2010s it was paradise all the dress-up games oh, all yeah, those yeah, yeah. Okay, all yeah. those like um those like kissing games <laughs> it's it, 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 how the mechanic those, works is the... weird games you gotta <laughs> talk about there those. was surgery oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. okay I, I just remember something I think uh, when I was in like middle school, I think that's when PewDiePie really was in his gaming phase where he did a lot of, um, you know, Let's Plays, all the horror games. So I think I remember seeing this one really graphic surgery video. And after that, I, I couldn't sleep for a good two days. This the image of organs haunted my, like, what is it? My seventh grade brain. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> This also reminds me, how do people go into biomed and not be traumatized the amount of organs they see? Bro, they just see stuff, dude. Uh, Can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, I, mean if there's, I think it's because, I think if there's blood, because with yeah. the with the because organs that we dissect, it's frozen. They're just like, they're frozen. Like frozen and they're already like, everything. Yeah. Done. Yeah, so, and it, it, it just it just we think of it as like they're, they're like preserved. Chicken. They're preserved. Basically. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, so they're not too her... bad to dissect. What? No. Yeah, like they're preserved. Com- wait, but like... Wait, 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 wait. Are you comparing human meat to chicken? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, as you can see, we're talking about the wonders of our childhood. You know. Yeah. The joy of being a child. The many things we've experienced. 
guys want to talk about more more games, more more books, TV shows? Um, has anyone read like Percy Jackson as a kid? Yes, yes. Yeah, I read the. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, I read that a lot okay. in sixth grade. Exactly. But Percy Jackson was like every kid's like introduction to the world of fiction. I feel like. Don't quote me on this. I'm just saying. You know, it's one of the it's one of those like cornerstones, like the foundations. Yeah, I think. Especially for like middle grade, I think books like, you know. No rainbow magic fairies. <laughs> it was it was the rainbow magic fairies. Stop wait, the wait, oh, guys! I love how like Budma and Zadia have like these really great action books, and me and Shreya are just coming with the most girliest books available. It's fine. That's completely valid. Don't worry. Wait, wait, what is I, the fairy things was like my guilty pleasure, dude. Yeah. I loved how sparkly and pink they were, but the I also characters. loved how dumb they were at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like, every single time there's some sort of evil dude, it's like the most super villain-esque generic name. It's like, oh, hi, I'm Dr. Evil or something. Like, some I'm here to steal your gemstone. Jack or, Frost. Or some, some dude who looks like Jack Frost and like, I'm here to steal your gemstone. So you never get your powers. Yeah. But, like, isn't that gonna murder the fairies or something? I don't know. C someone, like, any expert on this book series, please, like, let us know yeah. what goes on. It's been ages. It's, okay. I also just... Now that I think about it, I was, like, seven when I started reading. Seven, eight, I don't remember. But now that I think about it, that's over ten years ago. Yeah. Ten full years have passed since I've last picked up a Percy Jackson or a Rainbow Fairy book. Or a Magic Treehouse book. Or a a Fly Guy book. <laughs> a Nancy Drew book. A Hardy Boy book. Or even the A to Z mystery book. Yes, yeah. Was that was, like, probably the foundation of my childhood. Because, like, I think Percy Jackson I read, like, 5th or 6th grade, so that was, like, middle school for me. But, like, yes. 39 clues! Wait, uh, do y'all remember this? My childhood hero. Where's Waldo? Oh, I can never find him as a kid. I don't know. Do you always have to like look up where he was hiding every <laughs> single time? I feel like that was. I was just like sore losers as kids. I was just like, I, I give up. I don't want to know where he is. The he I Spy book. Oh my god. Oh my. god. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's literally what I thought as a kid. Like yeah. Oh, I Spy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to add about I Spy, but like that reminds me of watching like Pop Tropica, like Walk. Oh, you're so amazing. Yes. 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 The, I you still... don't know like the pain of just like keep forgetting your password and then you have to click forget password and then you oh. keep making passwords Ooh. until the game. I started <laughs> playing tired of you. Winter break. Oh, for me, it was like I kept making this accounts. <laughs> That too, that too. And nostalgia. <laughs> coming, like, it's like all this stuff, like, you know, personalizing the characters, so that was fun. Do I remember this relic? Club Penguin. Oh, okay. oh, Club Penguin. Oh, oh, Penguin. Oh, Penguin. Oh, no, no. It seems like me and Trey are the only ones with, like, semi-niche childhoods here. <laughs> okay, uh, anyways. Okay, Pop Tropica, my only actual exposure to Pop Tropica was through this one family friend who's... So they were, like, twins like us, and they had an older sister who was super into anime, super into, like... She was basically how I got introduced to the, the wonderful world of Beyblade, Avatar, oh, and Pop Tropica. About that. Yes. Oh, yeah, and what is it, Bakugan? Bakugan. Yeah. Bakugan, ba I don't remember. Some Baku something. Speaking of Beyblades, I have a very profound story on this. So, I was an apartment kid. I grew up in an apartment complex, and most of the kids you grew up with were also apartment kids, and you guys are just friends now. I don't make the rules. So, one time I went to, like, a friend's place. They would, like, live near, like, the center park. It's where most apartments have... Usually, they have, like, a park or a pool, mm -hmm. yeah. like, for the kids or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, most of the kids would just congregate around that area, and one kid, like, brought his Beyblades. <laughs> we went inside his house to play on the balcony, and we were just like, Beyblade, let it rip! And then it hit a window and broke. <laughs> we did what, like, what normal kids would do. Scatter. <laughs> like the glass that shattered. <laughs> okay, that rhymed. Yeah, um... 
Okay, I also had cousins who were also super into Beyblade. Most of the return gifts that we got as kids were like, it's Beyblade exclusives. Every single time we'd go to each other's house, we'd bring like a steel basin and like put the Beyblade thing and just like, just let's read it, literally just we let it rip and just see the things like spin around. We didn't actually know how to play the game. We just kind of did whatever. The PBS Kids, oh boy. It was like one of those, see PBS Kids is what like, Every kid who didn't have cable just grew up watching. I don't make the rules. It just happens. You got bored, you, you, you know, turn on the TV, and you don't have cable, you don't have the fancy shows, you don't have Ed and Eddie, you don't have, like, Courage the Cowardly Dog, you don't have Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon. Have, like, yeah, because that's on Nickelodeon. Mm -hmm. So you don't have... I mean, Legend of Korra didn't even come out until, like, 2013, I think. Yeah, I think it was, like, still in, like, middle school when Legend of Korra first started coming out. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. By the time it would probably yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you didn't have Nickelodeon, you'd have Cartoon Network, you didn't have uh what is it, Disney Channel or whatever. Yeah. You just you just turn on PBS kids and Yeah. yeah. I feel like people are like I'm twelve. Mm -hmm. For me, I had like PBS kids until like I moved here, so when I was like nine and then we had cable here. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Cuba's common here. I don't know. What's, what what's oh, Cuba? It's like, I think it's like Canadian. Like, yeah. primarily. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of Canadians. Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> Basically, Canadian people's good. That's a weird show. No, but there's like Jane and the Dragon, I think. Oh, and then there's yeah. a Wild Wildlife. Wild Wildlife and like Sunshine the Hedgehog show. Uh, I actually love that show. It was like Alfred the. the Hedgehog. Alfred, 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 Sid the Science Kid. Oh my god, yes. Oh my yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sid the Science Kid was slaps. So super, super cute. Oh yeah. Well, every, Martha's, Martha's we were all Word Girl. Word Girl was amazing. Oh, yeah. Everybody was obsessed. Oh, all of the, every single time we had a family reunion when we were still like, the older kids were in middle school and... Chocolate Sandwich guy or something. Oh, Chocolate Sandwich guy. Who's that? Like Blonde Kid named Toby. He's oh. from Milk Robots. Oh, Who? Wait, who? I don't even know. The blonde, the little blonde kid who was like in, in Robots. In, in Word Girl. In Word Girl. In Word Girl. I think we talked about this, but like, wait, what's the? Was annoying or something? Wait, Ooh. wait, can I say something? <laughs> Wasn't it Scoop the dude who found out her identity at the end? I don't know. I think I like, the ending. Yeah, happened. like not the end, but like I remember doing sure. I'm sorry, but there was this one episode. Yeah, there was this one episode I watched like a few years ago. Like it was like way after I, you know, kept up with it. And I was like, wait, what? Okay, all right, and also sure. Her friend. Her friend? Wait. Becky Gottsford's friend. Oh, really? I thought Gottsford. What was her name? <laughs> and TJ was her brother. Her brother is a legend. JJ? TJ. TJ. I thought I knew. I thought his name was JJ for the longest time. Oh. Alfred Hedgehog. Let me see. Let me see. I think I remember. Let me see. Oh my god. Wait. Oh no. Looks like a knockoff Digimon character. Do you guys remember Dinosaur Fang? Yeah. Yes. Buddy was annoying. I didn't like him. <laughs> that was fair. That was fair. <laughs> but speaking of which, I don't want to punch which him. PBS Kids show was like made you learn a lot, like a Patch lot. Patch with a lot. rough, rough men. Oh, Patch with yeah. rough, rough men. Word world where where you just oh, smack a bunch of letters world. together and then they make oh, something. God, it's a creepy concept in and of itself. Oh my God, I didn't really like that much. Out. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, if you think like about the, the if you think about the concept of word world, it is very creepy. Yeah. It's just a bunch. It's just words from out of nowhere smashed together and creating a sentient being. No. You can make like pie and stuff by combining. Where do the words come from? <laughs> I need to know the answer. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure when you're young, you're not like thinking about where it's coming from. Africa. Dude, if seventeen-year-old me watched Word World, I would have so many questions. 
ignorance is bliss, I Which guess. is exactly why you watch it when you were 7 and not 17. 17 you would be like, why am I watching this? But 7 year old you is not gonna care. I it's cool. Like, I feel like Arthur would be the funniest character. Yeah, yeah. Arthur's, Arthur's, Arthur's just Arthur's funny. Arthur's, Arthur's iconic. Arthur's so iconic. Like, Arthur's so iconic, dude. It's so sad that they stopped airing, but I honestly, I felt like it's a nice conclusion to the show. I just, to be even more honest, I feel like I should have stopped airing way before. No, they should have got the cutoff at like what? 2011, I think. That's what's. 10 the or 11. Yeah, yeah. But the thing about Arthur is that I was watching this YouTube compilation. I was watching this one YouTube compilation of like the most savage moments in Arthur, and this one comment sums up the show like perfectly. I couldn't, I, I could not find a better way to describe the show than, imagine, Arthur is literally just a show about a bunch of kids who all hate each other, put in the same room, and just forced to get along with each other. I love the dynamic between Arthur and DW, the sister. I feel like the only kids that have like genuinely had like a decent friendship were like Arthur and Buster. Yeah, and then the worst friendship on that show ever was Francine and Muffy. They just do each other dirty all the time. Every single every single episode, they were like at each other's throats. Oh Muffy? Muffy. Muffy. I always thought her name was Muffin. Like every single time I heard the word Muffy, I always think she looks like a muffin. She literally looks like a monkey. I still. I don't know. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, it's just I a bunch of kids who all hate each other. I remember this one episode where Muffy tried to like force Francine and Sue Ellen to eat meat, but they oh. were like being vegetarian. It was super bad. Super bad. <laughs> it's bad as a kid because you're told like, oh, you should never force people to like, you know, go against their will. But when you're rewatching it as an adult, you realize this show is so chaotic. It's this is peak Gen Z comedy. We just never realized it. This show was so ahead of its time that people are starting to pick it up now. You know, you've seen all, like, the edit video. Have you seen, like, edits of, like, Arthur and stuff? Yeah, they're out there. Honestly, I also feel like, okay, the relationship between DW and Arthur is, I think, one of the most realistic sibling interactions. Yeah, they're yes, like I agree. All their, like, no, like, they're like, I'm gonna, s- I'm gonna sell you off if you misbehave, okay, so I can become the only child and take over your room. I've, I've seen the edits on YouTube. They're so funny. Oh, wait. Uh, I feel like Shoya has personal experience with DW. Uh, as DW, yeah, but not as, like, spoiled. It's not spoiled. She's not spoiled. She's just kind of bratty. I don't know. That's what you call spoiled. Yeah. <laughs> Is that? Okay. Yeah, kind of. Okay, spoiled. Yeah, that's what you call spoiled. Isn't spoiled oh, yeah. like rich, though? <laughs> a rich and bratty is spoiled. Yeah. I mean, for me, like... I think for me, my sibling like relation, my relationship with my siblings are actually kind of decent, but it's also because we're like not as close. I don't know. I feel like it's just how it is. But like we're all respectful. But like I can see why DW and Arthur's relationship is really distinct for other people. Do you guys have like a huge age gap or something? No. Um. My okay. So I'm a middle child. So my older brother and I are like five years apart, and my younger brother's like six years apart. So it's like, yeah. And I think we're all considered Gen Z, so I don't know. <laughs> Fugma flexing her two minutes <laughs> difference from her older brother. I'm the older one. Yes, I know, you are the older, I know. I mean, younger. Mine is because we're like, we're twins, we're the exact same age, and we don't care about the whole... It's 120 seconds, what's the difference, really? And we're not 12 years apart, so it doesn't really matter. So... Up until that point, we never really bothered with the whole concept of older or younger until, like, I think at some point we, some research or whatever, some science or something, it's like, oh, if the twin that came out second is apparently older because they formed in the womb first. So mm. we were like, okay, then we'll just run with it, I guess. And my brother got, you know, then he realized, wait, I'm the second twin. I must be older than you. But obviously, he he's you know pretty chill about it. So he's like, I'm not I'm not gonna make you call me Anna or whatever, which means older brother in Telugu. But he did you know, it this became like a weird debate for quite some time now. Like, who is the older one in the twins? Is like the first one who got pushed out, or is the second one because of the whole did they get formed first? Or I don't know what the science says. Scientists, like, please you know explain who is the older twin. Form in the womb around the exact same time. No, there's always. 
They're, okay, it depends on the type of twin that you are. So fraternal twins is like science lesson. Okay, fraternal twins is where two separate eggs get fertilized in the same instance, but not the exact same moment. Whereas identical twins, it's one egg gets fertilized and then splits off into a completely separate cell, and they get, you know, they grow at kind of the same rate, the same time, same rate instance, whatever you want to call it. Which is why identical twins are, you know, genetically identical, and then fraternal twins, you know, are different genetically. So the information is passed off separately. So yeah. Very informative, I know. So Shreya, uh, you said that you wanted to talk about a sad story. Oh, yeah. or, or was that something else? I was about like when I was getting lunch, I just saw someone drop like a perfectly good bowl of like <sighs> food. It was like the orange chicken, and I was so sad. And I felt bad for him too, because he looked really sad because it's orange chicken after all. See, that's that kind of stuff is sad. But then I see people like willingly throw away their veggie wraps and just makes me mad. Like I had to wait in line for ten full minutes to get the last veggie wrap, and you're 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 out here telling me that you don't care. You don't care about waiting in line for this, the arguably the healthiest thing on the menu, this thing that's not gonna kill you the next day you eat it, and you throw it away like it. Well, this kind of stuff just makes me mad, bro. Okay, no, okay. Food opinions will be for another day, dear viewers. We will not get into this debate now. So if we did genuinely get into this debate, I'll be spending the whole time playing mediator. All right. So back to the topic, childhood shows. Do you all remember Fetch with Rough Rough Men? Come on now, that's the best show. Basically, Fetch with Rough Rough Men was one of the best shows. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs> Thank you, bye. If anyone like, if they want to like reboot it again, can we make it with like an older cast so I can get to be on the show? Oh, yeah, I, wa I wanna. <laughs> I wanna actually try to be on yeah, the show because it looks so fun. Speaking of older cast, yesterday, um. I, I had a small revelation, if you will, an epiphany about my state of being. So yesterday, I my cousin celebrated her eighth birthday. You know, she's eight years, eight years old. And I realized that, oh, I saw her as a literal newborn when I was only 10 years of age. And to me, then it also dawned on me, in two years, she's going to be 10. And I'm gonna be 20. It just feels so okay. Some things you just have to accept, like you're growing old, and that's perfectly fine. It's gonna happen to everybody. But at the same time, it's like it just feels wrong. It feels so wrong for me to say that I sh I'm gonna be 20 in like two years. Yeah, but you can't you can't hide the fact that change is a constant. Mm. But I feel old. <laughs> But no, if it makes you feel any better, it just dawned on me when I got my learner's permit that I'll be 21 by 2025. Because you know when you have these expectations of an adult, like elementary school, me would be disappointed at senior year me. It's so true. Because, okay, as a kid, you're always exposed to the idea of adults being, like, super hardworking, perfect. They, they know the world, they've been through all these, like, weird experiences. And once you hit adulthood, you're like, what have I done with my life? So guys, that I think that's the end of our episode. Sorry for the many cuts and, and interruptions that we had in the way. But um, that's all for our childhood, <laughs> our childhood semi, experiences, semi childhood experiences. And yeah, that's the end of our podcast episode. So if you guys have anything that you want to say to us, you can email us and um, or you can give us a voice message on Anchor, fill out the Dropbox Google form, or you can go to the physical Dropbox that is outside L125. I checked out the Dropbox and there's just a bunch of names, so we won't be uh, shouting out anybody's names. I think there was like a misunderstanding of what the purpose of this was for, because I know this was like super sudden. It, it just, it was just there, like the Mustang Studios poster and mm -hmm. a box and people are like oh let me write my name and put it inside are we again we don't know the intention of like, yeah. the name putting you know names into the drop box was but yeah so speaking of which uh i have two good good ones so we can we can read these two you want to read them sure um okay our first 
thing from the Dropbox is how to gain confidence. Um, oh boy. I feel like confidence is one of those things that it's not going to be instantaneous at all. It's one thing that comes from lots of experience. If you do a lot of, say, for example, um, one example that I relate to a lot is drawing. If you draw a lot, you'll gain lots of confidence in your own artistic skill and creative abilities because you're continuously learning and practicing what you want to practice in a way. So I don't know the context of this specifically. So it could be in anything. My, I take this with a grain of salt, obviously. There could be many different methods or um, ways out there. Uh, but I would say just dip your toes in a lot of new experiences. It could be daunting at first, but sometimes you just have to get over that hurdle of what if. You have to just kind of let go of the idea of the what if and just go like head first into anything, you know. That's, that's very inspiring. Okay, so our second one is, uh, I hope to hear podcast topics. Thank you. Some suggestions. College application tips for juniors and current topics regarding the school. So number one, college application tips for junior juniors. I think... My biggest advice to any junior who is going to be uh, applying for college, obviously, and for your senior year or whatever, start early. Always start early. Research, research, and research. Research all the colleges that you want to go to. Research the ones that have your subject of interest. If you are uh, one, if you're someone who wants to go into art, digital art, illustration, entertainment, whatever research the kind of work that the school puts out. There is no bigger turnoff than seeing a really reputable school, but with mediocre work. Even if the school is in like the top five lists or whatever, and the work speaks to you, it is worth applying for. Always. And if you're going to go into art, your portfolio is your the biggest thing in your application. Make sure you start collecting and making work that fits with the college's um, requirements. If they ask you to do um, extra work specifically for that college, do it. Learn and research past topics that they ask for and like ask around to see who has applied to that college and what they applied with. What kind of portfolio did they apply with? What um, major are they applying for? So yeah. I think research is your best friend and just start early. Get to know your college essay requirements. If they have essay requirements, um, ask, start, you know, prepping those letters of recommendation so you don't have to worry about it once you get to senior year. Don't do it last minute. Like, trust me on this. Do not procrastinate on college applications mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, and I would actually say start not even in junior year you should start in your freshman year I mean, like, okay that could be a little bit much though that could be a little bit much freshman yeah. year you're not they're not going to know exactly what they want to do right yeah. junior year is that is the perfect time to understand how to balance looking out for college and um keeping up with your schoolwork so that once you actually get to senior year that's where all the pressure's at you are kind of in um the right mental space or you are more mentally prepared to deal with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think you shouldn't worry about it until you're an upperclassman. But but you can still like explore options. Yeah, if you're a freshman, freshman and sophomore year. you get to know, be familiar with the college application process. But once you get to junior year, I think that's the time you should really start getting heavily invested into this kind of stuff. Again, research, 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 start early. Yep. And and is this, that all? I know it says a uh, second thing. Current topics regarding the school. Oh boy. Um, yeah, you have <laughs> things to say about that. The one thing that I'm going to avoid doing, or we, I think we want to avoid, is getting into current topics because some of the things that we experience as students may not be that conducive towards. Um, I don't think it would be a great thing to, you know, talk about in the event that administrative 
bodies uh, come Team. across teams or whatever come across our content yeah it, i mean it could be a positive thing because then we get a complaint across but then at the same time it's a little bit of a double-edged sword if you will yeah yeah i feel like i don't want mustang studios to become a rebel group of the school we're not we're not a rebel group we're we're putting out our opinions to share to the general audience g- the general public whoever listens yes. to this that is um if you were to start talking about current school topics i think we could make an entire episode about it yeah there, yeah, there are so cool. many things that in the school that i feel like as students there are lots of problems in the school that we can really talk about but then we also have to be careful in the way that we talk about it so yeah we, I think, we definitely want to talk about it but, but we'll just want to tread with we'll have to tread uh with caution it's like yeah. walking on eggshells yeah definitely and um i think that's pretty much it for what's in the dropbox and again uh please don't write names in the dropbox uh we're, we're not going to do any shout outs but we will read your messages and anything else that you want to say to us and you can put it inside the dropbox and that's acceptable yeah mm-hmm. and okay that's basically it follow us on instagram uh subscribe to our youtube channel i'm which is under the same name mustang studios i don't know if we're going to do like physical videos of us but we might try to do like animations mm-hmm. like, animate ourselves yeah. cuz i don't think you guys will see us all the time i think yeah. we're just trying this out yeah so for the time being we'll just be disembodied voices yeah. with names you may yeah. not know our faces you may know our faces and if you do maybe sup. maybe in our last episode like maybe <laughs> face reveal i don't know yeah I mean the video the only reason why we said we'd be doing video podcast but to be honest our camera uh, audio not that great and that too the setup that we have currently is not great for video recording we don't have much room first of all to because uh, we're doing audio right now right so our um, the, the space that we're working with is kind of small I think we're going to try to upload the video Oh <laughs> uh, okay Okay, I'll I'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. See, I'm just saying it's the quality's not that great. So, we yeah. probably will stick to audio for some time until we get uh yeah. an animated segment up and running. Animations. We if anyone is interested in helping animate the audio parts, let us know. Please let us know. If you like animation, if you like yeah. animation style stories or yeah. if you want to do or I if you know. want to do that kind of stuff. You know? Yeah, and you can sign up for you know, sign up like um, join the club as well like join the club put it in the dropbox say if you're interested yeah and write your name yeah and write your name you know email at ad- email address we'll call we'll get in touch yeah all right yeah and that's basically it um yeah and also add add our podcast to your spotify playlist if you enjoy what we if you enjoy our content please do uh add it to your playlist and follow us everywhere uh-huh. Hit the like and subscribe. Yeah, yeah, all that good stuff. <laughs> it's all and linked on our anchor website. Yep, yep. Check that out if you have the time. Yeah, and so yeah. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye.